Good morning, Pierce. Good morning, Yvonne. Let's start by having a quick look back. We've seen massive volatility in interest rate markets in recent months. And despite the already elevated levels, this has only increased in recent weeks. Can you briefly summarise what's been driving markets? Sure, Ivan. So rates market volatility has been extremely high at levels rarely seen since March of 2020 or the great financial crisis. We've been at these levels for more than three months now, so the volatility is very, very persistent. This suggests we may be in a higher volatility regime for some time. Um, in terms of equity markets, the first half of this year has seen the worst performance of the S&P 500 in almost 100 years. It has been even worse for bond markets, with recent uh, data suggesting that it has been the worst six-month period of returns for US Treasuries since the late 1700s. So what we have is an arm wrestle between inflation on one hand and weakening growth expectations on the other, which is causing this volatility. Central banks are front-loading rate hikes to dampen inflation. The more they do this, the higher the likelihood of a harder landing or a recession with lower economic growth and lower asset prices. Okay, and so how have central banks reacted? Yeah, so most recently we've seen the US Fed pivot from an expected 50 basis point interest rate increase to delivering a 75 basis point hike. And that was their first 75 basis point increment since 1994. This happened at the June meeting following a higher uh, CPI reading in the days ahead of that meeting, which, which made them pivot. The most recent UK inflation data was above 9% and the Bank of England expected to rise to above 11% later uh, this year. Um, because of that, we're seeing 50 basis point hikes priced uh, for the Bank of England over the summer and into the autumn. In Europe, at one point, markets had priced almost 50 basis points for the, the July meeting. Uh, that's now closer to 25. And if you think about the period between now and Christmas, there's around 150 basis points of interest rate hikes from the ECB priced. E, it's not just in, in G3, other central banks like the Reserve Bank of Australia and the Swiss National Bank have also surprised markets by delivering bigger interest rate increases than had been expected. Uh, so look, I think what we're seeing here is a common front-loading action by central banks right across the world. It has felt for a while that markets were first to signal higher inflation and the need for tighter monetary policy rather than central banks' actions leading markets. So are central banks at risk of moving too slowly? It's a good observation, Ivan, and you do tend to find that markets can often get ahead of central banks with regards to anticipating policy changes. However, few participants in the market or central banks themselves expected inflation to be as persistent and high as it has been. Uh, central banks were describing high inflation as transitory. That was their word of choice 12 months ago. Uh, they are very keen to tighten policy quickly, given how far inflation is above their targets, which are typically around 2%. I know this is something you've covered in, in, a number of times in, in webinars as well, Ivan. So I think where we are in, in, recently is that we've entered a new phase where global central banks are moving to increase interest rates sooner at a faster pace and ultimately to a higher level than they themselves were expecting as recently as three months ago. And this is the front loading that I alluded to earlier. I guess the big question is can they do this without severely impacting economic growth and can they essentially achieve the soft landing that they're looking for? I suppose the other thing to bear in mind for, for customers is that we are at the early stages of these hiking cycles. So the Bank of England and the US Fed have already hiked a number of times. The ECB are only kicking off their hiking cycle later this month in, in July. Um, only time will tell how far central bankers need to go to tackle inflation and what impact the rate hikes will have. Yeah, Pierce, as you mentioned in previous webinars, we had called out these upside inflation risks, but we are still in the eye of the storm somewhat. What are traders expecting in the second half of this year? Yeah, so markets are, are watching for a couple of things, uh, three things, I suppose, and they're all interlinked. You know, firstly, will inflation begin to slow at any stage or will it continue to surprise to the upside as it has been doing? The inflation peak in Europe is expected to be around September, October. Secondly, I suppose, will we see further signs of growth slowing and a fall in consumer and business sentiment, maybe even towards the recession that is, uh, you know, some people are starting to talk about? I guess if the answer to the first two questions is yes, then you know, will central banks actually deliver the rate hikes priced if it means you know, low growth or borderline recession? 
If the answer is no, then rates will probably rise even further um, you know, in that environment. It's unlikely we'll know the answer to any of these questions for a couple of months at least. Um, I mean, given this uncertainty, markets are expected to continue to price an aggressive path for central bank policy rates throughout 2022 and certainly in the case of the ECB on into 2023, unless the current narrative changes at the back end of this year. Ivan, I guess we should, we should touch on uh, what this means for customers before we wrap up. I'm sure many have been surprised by the sharp uh, market movements, the volatility we spoke about earlier, and are of course focused on what it means for them and their businesses in the, in the months ahead. Yeah, it's been a rough time for customers with variable rate debt as each time we update on interest rate markets, we seem to be the bearer of more bad news with term rates moving ever higher, really since December 21, but even more so lately as we've discussed. Customers were just about emerging from the worst of the pandemic when the Russia-Ukraine conflict started. So look, we all know by now that variable rates and therefore their cost of funding are on the way up. But it can be tough for customers to decide how much debt to actually fix when that medium term horizon is so unknowable. So I'll repeat our usual mantra Pierce, even if it's very predictable at this stage. Regardless of a company's leverage ratio, it's wise to fix at least a portion of debt and we ask our customers to stay in touch with your global markets dealer. We want to help customers manage their risks with a bespoke hedging strategy so that they can navigate all this uncertainty in the best possible way. So look, let's leave it there. Thanks very much, Pierce, and thanks everyone for watching.